Um, today we'll start with something that we are all familiar with, demand and supply diagram. So please draw with me as I'm drawing it. Um, use a ruler and um, ideally you should be doing this in pencil but I don't have pencil so I'm using pen and also for the clarity of the video. So um, you already know that in a demand supply diagram this would be labeled as price and this would be labeled as quantity and the upper sloping curve is the supply curve and we can label this as S1 and the downward sloping curve is D1. Uh, now we got our demand and supply diagram. It is not complete yet because we'll have to draw the dotted lines showing the various equilibrium points. So this is the equilibrium point when demand and supply meets and we will draw the dotted lines. Always draw the dotted lines starting from the equilibrium, not the other way around. And this would be Q1 and this is P1. Now this is all very familiar. Now this is demand and supply diagram in microeconomic context. This is demand and supply for an individual product. But now we will learn demand and supply diagram in macroeconomics. Right. So I'll just uh, run. So to draw this, again you would have to draw the um, y axis and x axis. Now the labeling here will be slightly different from our previous diagram. This is going to be price level as compared to price before and this would be labeled as output which signifies the total output in the economy and price level is the general price level of goods and services in the economy. Similarly we would have an upper sloping curve and instead of S or supply this is going to be our aggregate supply curve and we can label this as AS1 and this stands for aggregate supply you don't have to write this always you don't have to write it but I'm writing it because you're doing this for the first time Just write it but don't you don't have to do it always and then this is going to be your aggregate demand curve labeled as AD1 so just for your reference this time write what it means aggregate demand now by now you know what aggregate means is total demand or total supply in the economy whichever curve you're referring to and then then let's, let's draw the dotted lines and this is going to be labeled similarly as q1 and this would be p1 and Voila, we are done with our aggregate demand and supply curve. And now let's take a moment and compare both the diagrams here. Pretty much same, only thing is there are some difference in labeling. Instead of S and D, it is AS and AD in the macroeconomic diagram. And instead of price, is price level. And instead of quantity, it is output. So these are the subtle differences. Now we will try to uh, implement this uh, diagram in fiscal policy and we'll see how fiscal policy works. We'll try to see effect of fiscal policy using this aggregate demand and supply diagram. Now let's take a scenario. Uh, let's say the economy is in recession. Right? So when the economy is in recession, usually there's going to be high unemployment because when there is recession there is low levels of output low levels of output means low demand for workers and therefore there's going to be high unemployment in this scenario 
what do you think is the right fiscal policy? The right fiscal policy is going to be expansionary fiscal policy. Now, if you have watched and understood the previous video, you would know how this works. Expansionary in, in expansionary fiscal policy, government increases public spending or government spending and or it reduces taxes. Now, obviously, government spending being a component of aggregate demand, it increases uh, the aggregate demand directly. Taxes, it affects consumption, right? When taxes are lowered, there's people would have more disposable income and they can go and spend this and that increases um, that increases uh, consumer spending. Quickly, we'll just revisit the aggregate demand formula. Aggregate demand equals to C plus I plus G plus X minus M. So when there is expansionary fiscal policy, government spending increases and consumer spending increases. All of this together leads to increase in aggregate demand. Now let's try to implement this concept using an uh, uh, aggregate demand supply diagram. Okay, so now again, let's try to draw our aggregate demand supply diagram. Please draw with me. This is price level. And this is going to be output. Let's draw our initial aggregate demand and supply diagram. So this is aggregate supply curve initial. And this is aggregate demand curve initial. Let's get the equilibriums, the dotted lines, make sure it's dotted lines, Q1. And then this is going to be P1. Um, so the government is implementing expansionary fiscal policy and in expansionary fiscal policy aggregate demand increases, right? So the aggregate demand curve will shift to the right. And this would be your new aggregate demand. Show the shift by an arrow so it is very clear and understood. And now let's draw the new dotted lines. And this is going to be Q2, the output increases, and this is going to be our new price level, P2. Um, now, how does this expansion of fiscal policy works? The aggregate demand shifts to the right. As a result, output increases from Q1 to Q2. And as output increases, that would increase economic growth. And at the same time, um, as firms would need to produce uh, more goods and services, they would employ more workers and that would uh, reduce unemployment. So just have a look at this whole thing over here. Uh, we have our initial uh, demand supply diagram, then we do the ma macroeconomic uh, demand, uh, aggregate demand supply diagram, and now we showed how expansionary fiscal policy, uh, we, re uh, we represented, ex we, sh we have shown expansionary fiscal policy in this diagram here, the aggregate demand shifts. Now we're going to look into another scenario. Let's say the economy is in, uh, is, in uh, is, is having high inflation. There is high inflation in the economy. Uh, high inflation means there is increased price level. Um, now, when there is high inflation in an economy, uh, it's usually due to too much aggregate demand and the government would need to uh, put brakes on the economy in order to uh, correct this situation. Now, these are all corrective measures. Now, again, let's draw Okay, now let's, let's go to the explanation here for a bit. So when there is high inflation in an economy, 
the government would uh, implement contractionary fiscal policy to correct this. Now, in contractionary fiscal policy, aggregate demand would go down. And how would government do it? They would bring down public spending and increase taxes. Now, again, so this combination of these two would uh, basically reduce the price level. Let's come back to our diagram here. Uh, Y-axis and X-axis, very important. Uh, price level here, output here, and we'll have an upward sloping aggregate supply curve, and then downward sloping aggregate demand curve. Dotted lines showing the equilibrium points. This is Q1. And this is going to be um, P1. Now the government, uh, in order to reduce inflation, would uh, implement contractionary monetary policy. As a result, aggregate demand would shift to the left. And this is our new aggregate demand, AD2. And as aggregate demand shifts to the left, we'll see this is our quantity would shrink and price level would come down so this is price level and this is the desired effect now in both of these situations there is a policy conflict see as government tries to reduce inflation it also reduces output so, you know, price level might go down, at the, at, but at the expense of reduced economic growth, and that might cause also unemployment. Now, let's look at the previous scenario here. Over here, the government tried to solve uh, uh, the problem of uh, recession and unemployment by boost inflating aggregate demand. So, aggregate demand shifted to the right. As a result, output increased, but the, the downside was price level also rose. So, government tries to correct the problem of recession here. And unemployment but it uh, creates problem of inflation and over here the opposite is happening here government is trying to correct inflation but as but at the expense of economic growth so there's policy conflicts and due to this policy conflicts governments needs to use combination of policies which we will learn uh, in the coming lessons thank you